Turn, if you would, to Psalms 3, and we're going to look at uh, verses 1 through 3. This is a easy one to remember, in case you want to remember what we talked about, and uh, hopefully it'll be, it'll stick with you, and uh, you'll be able to use it down through your, your life. Psalms 3, and we're going to be concentrating on verse 3. 3, 3. Okay, let's, uh, let's look at the first couple of verses. Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Psalm 3 is, uh, according to the commentaries, is the first psalm that David wrote. Uh, if you know anything about David's life, he's, uh, it seemed like he's up and down quite a bit. At this point in David's life, his son, Absalom, has started a rebellion against him. A civil war, more or less, against him. Friends had left him. And behind him was David's affair with Bathsheba. And the, the uh, conniving against her husband, Uriah, resulting in his death. So he's got, he's got things behind him. He's got problems with friends leaving. And um, he says, Many are they who say of me, There is no help for him in God. They're telling him that God has left him. Um, no help. David could have entered into a shouting match with these people, defending himself. But he, instead of that, he just praised God for his glory and his forgiveness. Verse 3 says, But you, O Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the one who lifts up my head. You are my shield. Not just you provide a shield, but he says you are my shield. God had not left him. One commentator said that this shield is more than just something that you, a uh, warrior, would hold up in front of you. It's something that covers you from head to toe, more like a, a, a tough skin or like an alligator's hide. But it's even more than that. This is God himself as David's shield. He says, you are my shield. In other parts of the scripture, it speaks of putting on the whole armor of God. But here, it's God himself as being the shield. He said, you're my glory and the one who lifts up my head. Men and women find glory in all sorts of things. Fame, power, some find glory in their possessions, or their job, or their beauty. But David found glory in his God. He calls him my glory, and the lifter of my head. Nothing glorious in David, but there is something glorious and head lifting in David's God. 
Glory beyond description. The angels sang praises unto him, but they couldn't exhaust what they could say as far as his glory. We need to see God more, don't we? To see the, the glory of God more. We don't want to become too busy or too distracted that we lose track of the glory of God. The one who lifts up my head. That's an interesting phrase. Interesting description. There's a couple of illustrations I'd like to look at here. One is this. With all the sin that David had behind him, he certainly would have had excuse for his head hanging low. If it wasn't for the forgiveness of God, you can see how it would be uh, well, I don't know what the word would be for it. Pitiful. Same with all, with all of us. We need God's forgiveness. David needed his head lifted. Satan would like to keep us beat down and discouraged. He tells us we need to repent more or we don't deserve forgiveness, which is true, but it, we can be defeated if we do not take advantage of God's word and God's promises. Satan tells us that God's not listening to you, not going to hear us, or in David's case, God has left you. But God loves us. He's provided for us. If we trust him and take advantage of what he has offered for us. 1 John 1, 9 and 10 says, if we, for, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's promised us, and he can and will remove the burden. He's the lifter of our head. Another uh, illustration on the lifter of our head. I, I like this. Uh, I think maybe it, it shows even a bit more. But follow along with me for a moment. Say you're out in the desert. You're on foot. You've wandered and wandered. You run out of water. You staggered along to the last step. And you've fallen. You've dehydrated to where you can't go anymore. You collapse. And you're found by a search party. What is the first thing you do? He lifts your head to give you water. The lifter of our head. And it goes further than that. Sure, he lifts our head when we feel that we can't go any further. But he lifts our head when we literally can't go any further. When we're at the end of our life, at death's door, at heaven's gates, he's the lifter of our head. He's with us. He's promised that he'll be there. 
he will usher us through. David was years ahead of the one that was coming that would give living water. John 4.14 4, says, Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. We sing that in one of the songs this morning. He is my glory and the lifter of my head. The believer can say that. The best is yet to come. <laughs>